This book is called Eliza P. and Her Baby Seagull by Nancy Mike and Charlene Chua. Eliza P. loved to go boating with her dad, Libby. Whenever they went out during the summertime, Libby found baby birds. One summer, when Eliza P. was seven years old, her dad brought home a baby seagull. Eliza P. named her seagull now Jurok but called her now for short. Now was a pretty small gray spotted bird. Eliza P. fell in love with Now from the moment her father brought the bird home. For the first week, Now lived in Eliza P.'s house in a cardboard box. Now was always hungry. Libby taught Eliza P. which foods Now could eat. She fed Now sculpins, seal fat, whale blubber, and even small krill. Now, being hungry all the time, swallowed the sculpins whole with her yellow beak. Eliza P. was impressed. Now grew and grew and grew. She grew white and gray feathers and had pink webbed feet. Eliza P. and her brother Jimmy went to the shore together during low tide. At low tide, it was easy to hop from one rock to another. There, they gathered sculpins and krill for now to eat. They made sure to watch carefully for the tide so that they would be safe. Once Now got too big to live in the cardboard box, she lived on top of the family's shed. Eliza P. fed her just as her father had taught her. She even took Now down the street to show her friends her pretty pet bird. And she and her friends chased Now around and watched her swim in the ponds nearby. Now was loved by Eliza P. She taught Eliza P. how to care how to feed an animal, and how to have patience. Each day after school, Eliza became home and rushed to find Now. She fed Now and hugged her, and even and then brought her out to play. As the days passed, Now grew and grew and grew some more. One night, Eliza asked her father, how will Now ever learn to fly? Livy replied, if you throw her into the air towards the northern lights and stars she will fly. Eliza P. was afraid to throw her pet seagull, but knowing her father spent most days on the land and knew about many animals, she believed he was right. Now was about the size of a football and was quite heavy. Eliza P. picked her up, held her for a moment, then gathering all her strength, she threw Now high into the air, aiming for the northern lights and the stars. Now fluttered her wings, but did not fly. She landed on the tundra, looking excited and scared at the same time. On the second try, Eliza P. threw Now even higher. Wow, Eliza P. screamed as Now flapped her wings and glided a bit in the air. But Now soon landed right back on the tundra. On the third try, Eliza P. was no longer scared. She was excited for Now to finally fly. Eliza P. threw now once again, a gust of wind whipped against Eliza P.'s face, but she soon realized it was actually now's large wings flapping in the air. Now was flying. Eliza P. looked up at now with excitement. She was finally flying. She quickly flapped her wings and climbed high into the air, gliding on the wind. Eliza P. started to feel worried that now might never return, but then now, but when Now flew above Eliza P. and returned to the top of their shed, Eliza P. was relieved. After that first flight, Now often flew around town, mixing with the other seagulls by the shoreline. Eliza P. thought, how will I know which bird is mine when there are so many seagulls? Then she had an idea. Eliza P. found a pretty pink shiny ribbon in her mother's sewing box and tied a beautiful bow on Now's foot. Eliza P. smiled and said to Jimmy, now we'll know where she is. She is wherever she goes. Sure enough, when Eliza P. saw seagulls flying around the shoreline, she knew exactly where Now was. She watched while Now hunted krill and sculpins on her own. Sometimes Now even played with other seagulls. Now was one brave seagull. She traveled all over town and returned each night to Eliza P.'s shed. One day, Eliza P. came home from school and Now was not on the top of the shed. Where could my beautiful bird be? Eliza B. thought. The next day, Now still had not returned to the shed. 
After a few more days, Eliza P. knew that now was not coming back. Mom, Eliza P. cried to her mother, now is gone. Eliza P.'s mom gave her a big hug and a kunik, which means rubbing her cheek against her daughter's cheek. Eliza P., sometimes you have to learn to let things go, she said. Now will always be a beautiful spirit. She taught you many things, but she could not stay in our shed forever. Eliza B. wiped her tears and went back outside to play. After that day, whenever Eliza B. watched the seagulls on the shoreline, she quietly hoped to see a small pink bow tied to one of the bird's feet. She often gazed in the distance of the land and sky, watching the beautiful seagulls and hearing them enjoy the fresh, cold Arctic air. As she watched, she remembered now and her beautiful spirit. The end.